Chapter 1. By sharing responsibilities rather than shouldering them all, you can blossom into a brilliant team member. Individual brilliance is essential to every organization. However, teamwork delivers the best results. A good leader knows that it's important to share responsibilities. Sharing responsibilities increases productivity and enhances the cordial relationship that's needed in a work environment. It is relatively easy to focus on how to start your life, especially for high achievers who want to control everything around them, especially themselves. However, it takes strength, vulnerability, and trust to expand your efforts and build a winning team. It also takes wisdom to recognize that other people are capable enough to handle much of your problems. Your efforts and contributions should be primarily focused on where your greatest passion and impact are. Your attention and energy should not be overused, but purposefully directed where you can experience the smooth flow of passion and creativity. What differentiates between a good leader and an average leader is the ability to value the importance of those working for him. The least important person in your life has his or her own value, and you must appreciate the values. The biggest winner is not he who wins alone, but he whose team is considered the best. Chapter 2. The benefits of having a who is that you instantly get access to ideas that are not currently available to you. Richie Norton was a 16-year-old boy who wanted to start working. Although he came from a middle-class family, he craved control. He wanted to be free, make his own money, and spend it on whatever he wanted. Determined to achieve his goals, Richard Norton, Richie, decided to work at a grocery store and sacrifice his summer. He, however, decided to inform his dad about his decision. Seeing that his son was determined to be independent, Richie's dad, Mr. Norton, advised him to buy some unused watermelon and resell. Richie and his younger brother, Eric, took out all of the family's van's back seats and went to buy strangely shaped watermelons. These watermelons were very cheap, so they could buy enough watermelons to fill the van. In a few days, Richie resold the watermelons and made more money in a week than he would make in a grocery store a year. When Richie first decided he wanted to have more money, he asked, how can I make money? This question led him to think of getting a typical job for 16-year-olds that would have cost his entire summer. The question, how, costs a lot of time. In asking his dad for help, however, Richie was able to gain the perspective and access he lacked. He was also able to incorporate his dad's knowledge, capabilities, resources, and solutions, and turn it into a great business. By looking for more answers, he got a who to help him effectively create the result he wanted. The concept of asking how is linear and slow, while who is flexible, instantaneous, and exponential. Having a who also increases your freedom of time. Freedom of time is when you're in control of the time you spend on your business or doing the things you love. It is not fixed, but flexible. You will always find it hard to succeed where you can't improve your freedom of time because success isn't solely about having all the time to do what you want. It also involves using your time on increasingly quality activities. By saving his summer and creating his desired result much faster, Richie vastly increased his freedom of time. The crucial fact that you already have several who's all around you. Your life is filled with who's that serve specific and unique roles, enabling you to be able to do what you otherwise could not. In the realm of business, getting specific people to support you in your goals is an investment, often requiring money. However, as Richie's story shows, not all who's require money. The first who is always yourself. Improve yourself, value yourself, and ensure that you are connected to the most important people in your life. Chapter 3. People who waste a large portion of their lives procrastinating end up losing more for less. Procrastination kills productivity and growth. It results from asking how instead of who when trying to achieve a goal. Procrastination has many adverse effects, such as mental health issues, frustration, and lack of focus, leading to a loss of ambition. For a great leader, procrastination is a skill with which more can be done. When applied smartly, it helps you create more scenarios and distribute a huge workload among many people. As a leader, you must be clear and explicit about your life or organization's vision so that your organization's values will never be lost on your workers. Define the vision of your goal and highlight why it is important for everyone involved. Many brilliant and capable people around you are waiting and wanting to help you. All they need is to hear and understand your vision. Your potential becomes limitless when you stop asking how and start asking who. By asking who, it shows that you are willing to learn and understand how best to navigate a tricky situation. It confirms that you've acknowledged the fact that you need someone to help you grow. By freeing yourself up from hows, you'll have a new sense of purpose and clarity. You'll be able to free up your time, energy, and focus by getting people to support your ambitions in all aspects of life. If you spend too much time working on your weaknesses, all you end up with is a lot of strong weaknesses. Dan Sullivan Did you know, according to Ejutopia, 80 to 95% of college students engage in procrastination. Chapter 4. You can't have money freedom until you achieve time freedom. By freeing up your time, you can free up your mind if you know what you're doing. Freedom of time helps you focus on higher impact activities, improve your productivity, and increase your income in multiple folds. 
Improving how you spend your time automatically improves your ability to make money and make better decisions. How you spend your time is heavily reliant on your decision to add a who to a specific area of your life. By adding the correct who, you're creating an environment that eliminates decision fatigue in your life. Decision fatigue refers to the decreasing quality of decisions made by an individual after a long decision-making session. The best leaders can make decisions without feeling overburdened by the outcome. You must understand that eliminating decision fatigue from your life is one of the primary goals for being a high performer and increasing your income. A good commitment comes from clarity of vision and the decision to execute that vision in whatever way the who sees fit. Great leaders invest in their who's, challenge them, help them clearly see the vision, and get them as committed and invested as they are. Without clarity of vision, growth becomes slow and difficult. When you are clear with your vision and consistent with giving and receiving feedback on results, it becomes easier for you to increase your performance. You must be committed to results rather than a particular process. Instead of managing the process, you should provide freedom and autonomy and succinct clarity and high excellence standards. Focusing on how will drastically limit your ability to make money. By trying to employ cost avoidance, you'll lose more than you're trying to save. Avoiding costs by engaging in hows will cost you in the long run. However, when you see yourself as an investment, you can expand your freedom of time, money, relationship, and purpose rather than a cost. Chapter 5. The best relationships are built when both parties have something to gain. The idea behind continuous growth is that you must never stop creating value and nurturing your relationships. When building a relationship with people, always focus on what's in it for them rather than what's in it for you. Be intentional about what the other person cares about. Get to know them, their context, and their goals, and give relevant value. Don't waste their time trying to force them to see things your way. If you want to develop transformational relationships, it's advisable to approach relationships in a transformational rather than transactional way. Bring visible results to the table when trying to attract bigger who's. The best way to make people buy into your ideas is to make sure that there's something worth the effort for everyone involved. Avoid starting with big promises of future results and deliver immediate results instead. A true leader is truly committed to service and growth, not personal glory. It pays to be nice to the people you meet on your way up because they are important to your growth when things aren't all rosy. This doesn't mean that you have to align with everyone. To have the freedom of relationship and time, you can no longer engage with people that don't align with your vision. As you say no to people and opportunities that don't align with your future self's vision, your confidence will increase. This will also boost the team's confidence in you as a leader. Making courageous decisions based on the future you want to create as a leader can help you make bolder leaps into your freedom and success. Wherever you see brilliant work happening, make an effort to contribute positively so that you can always find a way to develop. You can never have all the answers, which is why it's wise to seek other people's perspectives and solutions. Chapter 6. Focusing on how makes you rigid and non-collaborative in your thinking. Many people make a mistake by focusing on how without paying enough attention to who. Focusing on how stresses you out because it makes you isolated in your goals and forcibly slows your progress. Isolated goals diminish your dreams, affect your creative innovation, and limit your future. However, when you collaborate with people, you expand your purpose and vision within yourself and other people. Collaboration allows you to focus and not feel guilty about getting help. It also transforms your project's initial intent into something better and more impactful than you had planned. Through collaborations, you can expand your vision. Expanding your vision enhances your experience and gives you more opportunities. Every leader needs to be open to learning at all times. Only through this can you find who's who can turn your life around in many ways. Your life purposes and dreams will be given a renewed dimension that will wholly transform and expand you with the right who's. The right who's will help you see potential in your future and in your work that you can presently see for yourself. They expand your vision, thereby giving you the confidence to pursue big goals. Your who's become your purpose, and that's why they are essential to your growth. You are never pre-qualified to live your dreams. You qualify yourself by doing the work, by committing, even over-committing to what you believe you should do. Benjamin P. Hardy Conclusion Everyone needs at least someone who will help them make better decisions in life. Starting a business requires having people who can help you and guide you. Many people make the mistake of focusing on the question, how, when trying to start a business. While it's okay to want to know how to start and grow a business, what you really need is at least someone who will give you sound advice. It doesn't matter if you have a sound business idea. As long as you don't involve others who can help, you'll find it difficult to succeed. Success comes with responsibilities and the ability to collaborate with others. Although the market is competitive, your priority shouldn't be about competition. Find people who can actively contribute to your individual growth. When you successfully find the right who's, be open about your ideas with them. Your ideas might be good, but since no one knows it all, you must always be willing to learn from others. Your who's are not limited to your investors, stakeholders, or advisors. They represent everyone who's contributing to your business's growth. 
Be clear about your goals with them and make sure you only collaborate with those whose views align with yours. Try this. Before starting a business, consult experienced people and ask them the best way to go about it. By listening to their experiences, you'll be able to pick out the details about what they did to succeed and how they bounced back after setbacks.